I did it. I did something where some professionals had told me that it cannot be done, or at least they've never managed to do it before. I've even reached out to other hobbyists that have told me nearly the same thing, that they don't even know where to begin. What that is, is I am the first person to culture these North American species of fairy shrimp in captivity. These species of fairy shrimp belong to the genus Eubrancovis, if you haven't guessed it yet, because I talk about them a lot. In order for me to hatch these fairy shrimp, it took several years of reading many different research papers, which surprisingly a lot of them had conflicting views and thoughts, until I finally stumbled across one of them. I'll link it in the description below. But this is a paper by Jens Mossens. In their experiments, they were able to hatch the fairy shrimp. However, they did not grow the fairy shrimp to maturity. In this video, I will show you the process of what I did to find these fairy shrimps, hatch them, and grow them to maturity in captivity. I hope you enjoy this video. Before we get started, if you really want to support me and you want to see more content, hopefully better content, because I feel like it's mid right now, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below. I really enjoy the engagement that I get with you guys, so please comment anything. But I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. My first step was to look for a vernal pool. I've mentioned this before, but these are temporary habitats. They only hold water for a short period of time throughout the year. These fairy shrimps are usually tied to temperate regions that receive a fair amount of rainfall. In a habitat like this, the seasonal rains will wash away minerals from the soil. They tend to leach deep into the soil layers. Because of the low mineral content, these vernal pools will be low in dissolved solids. As you can imagine, with an environment like this, the fairy shrimps are more than likely osmoregulators, meaning that they try to retain ions in their body and expel excess water out. Once I find a suitable habitat that may or may not have fair shrimp, I always collect a sample of the soil in which I will look under the microscope for eggs. Now this is the case if I'm in the field, but sometimes I can't always travel. So I tend to network around and find people that have vernal pools on their property and they're so kind enough to actually share a soil sample with me. If possible, I try to do my collections during the dry season, so I disturb the habitat a lot less. But once I do have a hold of my soil samples, that is where I begin the next step of sifting the soil through fine meshes to isolate the eggs. Using a dissecting scope, I will search for the eggs if there are any, Sometimes it takes a hawk's eye to identify them, since many different species can have different textures on the eggshell. Generally, in this genus of fairy shrimp, they all have similar shapes and patterns. I then painstakingly pick out all the eggs that I can from the soil, and I will set them in a petri dish. This next part, a lot of research papers had me confuse on the next step that these fairy shrimps needed in order to hatch. Some said drying, some said freezing, but it turns out they're very much like seeds. They essentially needed a stratification period in order to trigger hatching. This period can extend from 30 days all the way to even 90 days. While that was in process, I created a insulated tank, which had three chambers inside. These three chambers did not have any flowing water, but what did was the outside tank in which I used an aquarium chiller to maintain the temperature. The fairy shrimp require very cold water, at least below 60, so I try to keep it below that. And as I mentioned about their habitat having very low dissolved solids, I use half tap water and half distilled water for the tanks. I then used a clay soil or organic matter as the substrate for these tanks. Lastly, some small aeration. After about 30 days had passed by, I went ahead and checked on my eggs. 
And yes, I'm just keeping these eggs in my refrigerator. The eggs of fairy shrimp are incredibly tiny, so it's very difficult to see them with your naked eye, but under the microscope, we can get a pretty good view. As you can see, there is a ton of eggs and there is a membrane popping out. This is actually the baby fairy shrimp. These fairy shrimp are unique because they don't hatch right away. Instead, they have a stage called pre-hatching. This is where the embryo emerges from the egg, but it's still encased in a membrane where it continues to develop. They will reach a stage called metanoply. This is because these fairy shrimps are much more developed compared to other species that hatch as nulpli. If you look closely, you'll notice that they already have eyes and limbs forming. This is the next tricky stage to culturing these fairy shrimp, is how do I hatch them from their pre-hatch stage? In the research paper, they exposed the baby fairy shrimps to carbon dioxide, which actually allowed them to hatch. In my case, I don't have CO2 available like that. So I created a solution to increase carbon dioxide levels. I collected my pre-hatched individuals using a pipette, then inserted them into the vials that contain this special solution. I made this solution on accident trying to recreate their habitat, but it actually worked. Couldn't really tell you the chemical processes happening in here, but once I've added the eggs and shook it vigorously, I saw a lot of carbon dioxide come from the solution. Like I said, don't know what's happening, but I know it works. And my results were incredible. Usually after a few hours, I will get some to hatch. If not, at least within the 24 hour mark, I will get most of the individuals to hatch. Again, using a pipette, I'll go ahead and collect the baby fairy shrimp and move them into their adult tank. I've grown many different species of fairy shrimp, so when it comes to raising them from babies, I didn't find this too challenging for me. Due to the temperatures I was growing them at, or it might be genetics as well, but these fairy shrimp grow incredibly slow, almost taking a month for them to reach maturity. I consistently fed them a diet of powdered tubifex worms and also Daphnia. They also ate the detritus and microorganisms that were present in their tank. From here on out, I just needed to consistently feed them and be really patient since they can take quite a while to grow. As we watch these fairy shrimp grow, I do want to talk about why they are so important. These fairy shrimps can only be found in vernal pools. And as we continue with human development, we tend to encroach and destroy these unique and fragile ecosystems. As a result, there's a lot of organizations that have a huge emphasis in protecting these habitats. One of the reasons is because we don't necessarily know how to restore them, and also we don't know how to incorporate fairy shrimps back into them. I know methods have been described by using a existing vernal pool, collecting the soil and moving it to a new vernal pool, hoping that the fairy shrimps will establish themselves in this new habitat. However, in my case, we don't necessarily need to disturb these habitats, but we can captively grow these fairy shrimp to produce an abundance of eggs and then introduce them into a restored habitat. This is especially important for endemic species that only occur in one region. So if their habitat gets wiped out, that's basically the end of their story. My goal is to use this method in the future for endemic species of fairy shrimp and hopefully change the trajectory of their declining population. Now back to my fairy shrimps. After waiting around 30 days, I finally have some juvenile fairy shrimps, which are a few days away from being at full maturity. It was kind of insane that I was able to grow these fairy shrimps in the dead set of summer because they tend to occur naturally during the winter time or very early spring. Finally, after patiently waiting for so long, I had my first full adult fairy shrimp. This fairy shrimp is commonly known as the knob lip fairy shrimp, but scientifically, Eubrancopus bundii. 
Let me just say, the colors on this fairy shrimp are absolutely stunning. The green and orange hues just make it stand out. On top of that, a part of the anatomy, fairy shrimps have a crown-like structure on the top of the head, known as the second antenna. The pair of second antennas on this fairy shrimp make it look like it has a huge head, and it just gives it this adorable factor to it. I did have a female of this species, but she ended up passing away after producing her first clutch of eggs. Luckily, I have a second batch of shrimp in my fridge waiting to be hatched. This other species is the springtime fairy shrimp, scientifically known as Eubrancopus vernalis. If you live on the east coast, this is probably one of the more common species of fairy shrimp you'll find. This species of fairy shrimp is absolutely stunning. It has such vibrant colors. The pair of second antennas on its head are extremely large and it reminds me of like antlers on a deer. In general, I think fairy shrimp are just amazing. They have this graceful swimming pattern as they glide through the water. And when you see them in the wild, they're in the thousands and it's just a sight to see. I can honestly watch these fairy shrimps swim all day. But this is it. I was finally able to captively breed these two species. And on top of that, I'm working on a fairy shrimp repository or an egg bank. So hopefully soon I'll have more Eubrancopus species and I will culture them and feature them on this channel. So please subscribe to my channel if you want to see those unique species. I would talk more about these species, however, then I would have less content for later. So I'm going to save a species spotlight for both of these. This basically concludes my video, but I really appreciate it if you stayed this far. I took a bunch of footage of these fairy shrimp, so if you like to stay and watch the rest, I would also appreciate it. But thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.